The term boutique conjures up the thought of trendy stores with impressive prices. Add the word serger to boutique and change your vision to trendy styles made with ease using your overlock serger. Expert serger Barbara Goldcorn is with me once again to show you how you can create your own boutique style projects with ease. Welcome back, Barbara. Thank you, Nancy. I'm excited to be here again mm -hmm. and to share some other projects that we haven't shown yet uh, to your viewers. So we're going to start with a really easy one. And the first project that we're going to do is uh, if you purchase a child's t-shirt and get some coordinating fabric and turn that boring tee into a boutique style dress using your serger to gather and finish the edge of the ruffles, it's an easy serger project that we called Ruffled to a Tee. Serger Boutique, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy. Celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The ruffles on the ruffle to a T boutique little top and dress have two serger treatments on it. The outer edges are finished with a rolled edge stitch, a very common serger stitch, and then the chain stitch with some special settings create the ruffles, which is, I, I really think it's a great idea. I'm going to show you the simplest one. And Barbara, you started, when you created or designed this, you cut ruffles a specific size. Right, so I cut uh, four ruffles for that mm -hmm. size t-shirt, two and a half inches, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inches. And if it was a smaller size, you would only maybe use two or three Correct. ruffles. So. Correct. Now the rolled edge stitch, check your owner's manual of how to do the setup for that stitch. And you'll find that you're using a very small, you'll get a very small edge. Trim off just a smidgen of fabric along the top and the bottom. And it'll, it'll take a couple of minutes for you to do this. And then you'll have that very nice edge. And what a clean edge that gives you. We've taken some liberty of finishing the edges on your sample, Barbara, and you're going to now do that specialty stitch, that chain right. stitch. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to just thread up your machine for a chain stitch. So if you need to use your owner's manual, go ahead and do that. And you're having, it's one chain looper and one needle thread. And one needle thread. Right. Yes, so you could put a heavier or a decorative thread in that chain looper mm -hmm. because it's going to be stitched upside down. Uh, we're going to add this little table here because we want a flat surface and we're also sewing a little ways in from the edge of the fabric. So we need this kind of setup which your manual will tell you what to do. And we do not use, want to use the cutter. We don't want to cut that rolled hem off. Uh, you're going to set your differential feed which will make the fabric gather more up to the highest number and put your stitch length to the longest number. Now that differential feed makes the feed dogs bite more fabric. That's all it does and right. it really helps in the gathering area. And then there's that foot. So mm -hmm. the, the foot that I'm using is called a cover chain stitch foot. And it goes with a stitch. Yes it does and it has a, a little spring a piece at the bottom of the foot uh, which works in conjunction with your feed dog. So as your feed dog is grabbing the fabric, uh, this will help gather even more. It, it takes it a little tuck. It pinches it up. Mm -hmm. Yes, makes little tucks on there. So that's the foot we're going to use. And we're going to sew with the wrong side of the fabric facing up because mm -hmm. we want that heavy chain stitch on the top. So if you want to mark your line for this, you, you can do that if it'll help you go straight. And you just need to do one row of gathering. That will be enough. And you can see how nicely that mm -hmm. fabric is gathering. It's a lot easier than having to yes. pull it up yourself. It's not adjustable. It's not adjustable. But you probably would have made a little test piece before. Sure. Just to make sure you have enough fabric to go around that t-shirt. So just a very easy technique. So you would do the rolled edge stitch on the top and lower edges of all strips. You'd gather it with the 
chain stitch, and as I said, it doesn't adjust. And then on the t-shirt, here's Barbara's recommendation to mark a chalk line two inches above the hemline. And this will be for the lowest, the or widest, the, the, widest mm -hmm. the widest one will be at the bottom. And here you can see that I have pinned the ruffle along that marking. And now with a traditional sewing machine, straight stitch the ruffle into place. You know, straight stitch it on. Now notice we didn't make any the right size. You just kind of get the size to fit at the end. And let me show, here's just a seam that you kind of you just have to adjust join it, it up together, adjust it to go round. So here's the narrow width, the second largest, the, the middle size, and the smallest, and ruffled to a T, a shirt that can be made with two unique serger stitches. Our next stop on the serger boutique tour is to create a romantic cottage pillow. Vintage inspired, you'll use your serger to add ruffles and trim and to create pin tucks, which are the focus of the serger boutique lesson. What we're trying to do in this series is to add techniques as we go along. And the pillow that Barbara created features some of the techniques from earlier in this program and series. Now, Barbara, this ruffle is much like the ruffle you just created. It's done exactly the same way down the center. Rather than finishing the edges with a rolled edge stitch, Barbara purchased bias trim that is just already folded in half, cupped around the edge of the fabric, and stitched. And then you did that ruffling technique down the center. So it looks totally different, but with the Correct. same technique. And then the ribbon is top stitched on. You could top stitch it on with a regular machine, but since this is a serger program. You got to do it on the serger. And we use that same foot, the over, or the the foot is Come. called the cover stitch cover foot. Stitch foot. It has mm -hmm. an opening and the ribbon goes through the opening and then she just stitched it down with that straight stitch. So looks different but same settings. But now we're going to change the settings. And that's for the pin tucks and we'll take a close up look at these raised stitches that have straight needle, looks like a double needle but it's done with a serger and Barbara. That's a specialty of yours. Yes, I love to do that. And uh, it really does make a difference if you cord these pin tucks. Add cording to Add the stitch. Add cording. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to tell you first how to set up for, them, Please. for the, this technique. So we're going to use a narrow cover stitch now. So we've got two needles going. And you can use your decorative thread. You can use regular thread, but in kind of pastel colors. And we've used rayon thread for all three. Yes, it gives a nice. Three. Threads. It gives mm -hmm. a nice sheen to that. And then again, we have the setup with the table because, as you can see on here, I am going to surge down the center of this piece of fabric. So we don't want the blade working. So just mm -hmm. the same setup as we've been having all along. Uh, just a standard stitch length, no uh, change on the differential feet. So the pin tuck foot I have on here, and it has a little tunnel underneath it, mm -hmm. so that when the cording that we're going to use uh, goes underneath the foot, it has a place to stay in place. And the pin tuck foot has this cording guy that comes with it, and it has a little hole on the top. And you're just going to open up the front door, put this in, and close it back up. So it's really easy to get attached on there. And then you're going to put your cording through the little hole, so you can really use whatever cord um, will fit through this little hole. So if you want to use a decorative edge, now sometimes these cords will mm -hmm, kind sure. of do their own little thing. So if you just cut that off at an angle, it'll be a little easier to get in. I think that's the trickiest part of this whole process. Yes. So let me just get this. Our viewers at home will appreciate seeing us there we go. take two times. There you go. So we've got that through, and then you want to just run this underneath the presser foot so that uh, before you put your fabric in, you can actually get the cord between the two needles, and it, it goes in there pretty quickly. Okay. So I'll just unwind this a little bit. So we're going to do uh, one pin tuck uh, with the right side facing up, so mm -hmm. you're just going to get um, two rows of stitching, of straight stitching on the top side. But you'll notice how that pin tuck really stands up yes. because of the cord. It makes a big difference. So we got that one out. 
So you can see how nice that pin tuck it, it does look. It looks lovely. And then uh, to do it with the cording actually showing on the right side, we're going to flip this upside down and just do the same thing. And so now your cording will give it a more decorative look on the right side. And because your cording has a little sheen to it, it glistens a little bit. It sure does. So you can see how pretty that looks. So we have an accent, a boutique look with pin tucks, the right side and the other right side. Weaving strips of fabric together is nothing new in the sewing world, but adding a fabulous finish to the strips prior to weaving earns this technique a place of honor in our Serger Boutique mini-series coined the woven fab finish. This technique can be used for home decor, accessories, and wearable art. When you take a close-up look at Barbara's pillow, you'll see that there are strips, horizontal and vertical, and they have binding on both sides. Love this fabric combination. It's really art, arty and well, thank you. decorative. The binding is the feature. Correct. That's what really makes it pop. And this is an accessory that fits on a serger. It's called a single bias binding attachment. Correct. Kind of a interesting configuration and you cut st strips of fabric. It doesn't have to be bias for this one, right Barbara? It doesn't have to unless you are going around curves, but for this project you don't need bias fabric. And you thread it through the opening and grab it with your tweezers and why you normally have this on your machine but I'm just showing you how it feeds folds it under on the top side and then the underneath side is just a single layer now Barbara has her machine set up for the cover the, excuse me the chain stitch we've been using that in this program right and you already and have begun I'm ready to go mm -hmm. and you could use a cover stitch if you want sure so you do have some options um, so as Nancy mentioned the the fabric is cut to fit this opening it's attached onto the little front cover and I've already done one side and we're just going to bind the edge really quickly so it it just goes really really fast without you having to do too much at all you just butt the right you, side of the fabric in the attachment. Right, so you push it right up. And the nice thing about this single fold binder, because that bottom is single folded, it's less bulky. So mm -hmm. it really serves the purpose for this particular project. So just really easy. <laughs> you don't even have to look if you don't want to. You can do it without looking. And that strip is done. I like it when it's easy and it looks like it's complicated. So there's the strip all finished. So then Barbara created some strips with the dark on the outside binding and, and switched it around, creating two components. Now to do the weaving. The weaving is placed on a piece of fusible interfacing, the fusible side up. And you'd lay down all your vertical strips or your warp strips if you were a textile major. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would weave in and out the horizontal or the filling or weft strips and lay it down. You had to use that knowledge or that information somewhere. So now you can see that. I have it somewhat woven. Now this is a good suggestion that Barbara gave to me and that's to use, use a pressing sheet. The Teflon works well because if you would use a press and you'd press on, you get your iron over onto the interfacing, it's not the, iron will not have the fusible on the bottom and you lift it up and then it is fused into place. Just enough for you to make your own fabric. It's, it's a very pleasurable process. Very it's, easy. Mm -hmm. Very easy to do. And if we look at this finished pillow, as we mentioned earlier, you're not limited to home decor. Try an accessory, a handbag, wearable art. It's a great serger boutique technique. Combine a basic four thread stitch with an innovative binding and you'll have an eclectic mix. Barbara's trendy table runner showcases unique fabrics and techniques. That's why we call it eclectic serging. So often you maybe just use one stitch on your serger. Well, throughout this program, I hope you've been encouraged to use many of the stitches that are available. And on this 
sample, we have three different stitches showcased. Subtly, but they're there. The ruffle is going to be created with just a basic four thread stitch, the most common stitch on the serger. You can adjust the gathers for this particular stitch. The ruffles on the edge have a rolled hem or rolled edge finish, and we've done that earlier in this series. But now we'll add the eclectic touch, not only with beads and bobbles, but with a double folded edge binding that's put on the edge with a cover stitch. So three different stitches, that's all you need to work with this. Barbara will show you the double fold binding and it's an apparatus that looks very comparable to the one we just showed you but instead of the underside being flat it will be folded a second time so both sides have this lovely binding edge. But I'm going to work with the basics, the four thread overlock stitch and Barbara you'd like sometimes just to ruffle and gather with that stitch. I love to gather on the serger because the edge is finished off and when you pull up your two needle threads to gather, you, you never have threads breaking like you might have on your sewing machine. So I have the four threads as yes. you can see and it's a basic stitch. You can really go fast. And sometimes when you use a gathering attachment and it doesn't pull up as tight as what mm -hmm. you're going to do now. So, so this way we can look just like that very basic seam, but we tie the threads together on one end and they're tied close to the uh, fabric. Let me just show you on this end, pardon me, they're tied close to the fabric. And then on the other end, I've started by pulling just the needle threads. See if you can get the needle threads and just pull. And that way you can get the silk dubioni, which this fabric happens to be. You can get it very close together and these threads don't break. They really don't. So you can see how tightly you can get it and it lies flat. Yes, it does a great gather. And when when you put that to a flat piece, those gathers don't move, which is yes, really nice. It's, it's really a, a nice way of using that stitch. Right. Rolled edge, then we've done the gathering, but then the eclectic touch. So what we're going to do here is similar to when we bound the edge of those fabric strips mm -hmm. for the pillow, except this has got the double fold binder. So um, in order to have a, a strip of fabric to attach the beads onto, sure. you want to just Surge out a strip of fabric first, and sometimes I'll put a pin where I think I need to start with the fabric in there. And your fabric has both the lining and the top fabric surged together. Correct. So if you uh, have these two layers together, it really helps keep them together mm -hmm. if you just do a, a narrow three thread overlock over the edge. Sure. And it'll be much easier when you put them in. One mm -hmm. fabric won't slip away. So I've already got that started over there so we're just going to put the fabric right up into the attachment just like we did with the other attachment but I, and then you're going to also have a tail oh that's correct sorry we don't want to put that in yet so as soon as i get to where i think we're going to have that tail finish kind of gauge that then you want to make sure you do this on both ends so you have mm -hmm. a tail on both ends so this is pretty much going to run through without you holding on to it too much. You just place the fabric next to the inside of the attachment. And then when we get to the end of the table runner, we'll have some fabric left over to create the other side to attach the beads onto. Just keep going. The table mm -hmm. runner is now bound. And we'll just stitch this out. It's very clever. So you have a tail now on both ends. And once you've attached the beads, you might want to trim it down a little bit. So here's, again, the final look. You saw the table runner lying flat earlier. Here it is dimensionally adding the, the cute accessory. So a cover stitch, a rolled edge, a four thread stitch, a great way of ending our serger boutique sewing segments to show you great ways of utilizing your serger to its fullest potential.
When I ask today's Nancy's Corner guest how many fleece hats have been made by her organization, she calmly said, oh, 26,000. She is one of the dedicated group of people who sew hats for causes and for those in need. Please welcome Nancy Daly, the coordinator and one of the enthusiastic hat ladies. Thank you, Nancy. Welcome. And this is an, a charming story and had a, a, a small beginning and now it's flourished. Tell us how it began. Well, it started about 15 years ago, just when my children were both quite young, and uh -huh. I just started sewing hats. And I sewed hats for um, my own children, but sewed, ended up sewing for their sports teams, soccer teams, and sewed for children in their classes in school. And it really just grew since then. You know, I'd be invited to sew for the entire class, and then pretty soon, <laughs> more children in the school. Um, and they're fleece hats. They are. They're all made out of polar fleece and mm -hmm. clearly multicolored. The, sure. the more colors, the better in many of the hats. But sewing for a sports team is one thing, but what now these hats are used for, or the wearers wear them, are for a little bit different group. Right. We started, actually, in a, I think it was 2002, I had an opportunity. I was invited to sew for a Head Start class mm -hmm. and went in. There were just 17 children. I went in. I sewed hats for all 17 children. And then as I left, standing out in the parking lot with all the fleece and my sewing machine, and I thought this was an aha moment. Uh -huh. And I just thought that was something that really made me feel good. The children felt good. And I realized it's a lot bigger than just a hat. Um, they And it's bigger than a hat because, A, they get something warm to wear. Mm -hmm. And we both live in a, in, co yes, a, cold, a cold climate. Climate. <laughs> but then also they got introduced to sewing. They get introduced to sewing, and for many of the children we sew for now, this is one of their first pieces of brand new clothing that belongs just to them. And every single hat has, a, has their own name tag inside of it, so each child is, is really reminded that this is yeah. their hat, it has sure. their name, and there's no mistake about that. So they'll write their name on this hat yes. so you know. So tell our viewers how the hat ladies, and there's a hat guy yes, too. Yes, we have a hat gentleman. Uh -huh, <laughs> that you go into a classroom and you do the sewing and the children work with you. Yes, we, we set up our schedule in September of each year and mm -hmm. we, we really spend the whole year cutting fleece out, as you can imagine. Um, <laughs> There are some sample pieces here, a sample band. We have um, a number of years ago, my son made a template of the two hat pieces that we use, the, the triangles on the top and then the, the band piece. And when Nancy turns them around, you'll notice they're just made out of, old, <laughs> of parking signs, no parking <laughs> signs or for easy, sale signs. Easy to trace. Right, easy to trace, easy to duplicate. So we cut out masses of fleece, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds of yards of fleece continually all sure. year round. We have some hat ladies who do nothing but cut for us. And then we have a plan, really, we have about 45 to 50 hat gigs each season from the end of September into February. And these will include every Head Start child in our community. So we go to every single um, mm -hmm. pro, you know, program and actually sew with the children. They don't do the sewing, but they watch. That's correct. They, uh -huh. don't, they don't actually do it, but, but sure. they really are full participants. They, we, we say that they spend longer choosing the colors that they want than we spend sewing the hat. And the fun combinations, I mean, they may not be exactly what we would choose, but wow, they're fun. They're, there's no doubt that kids have played a part in choosing the colors. Mm -hmm. And some of the hats, you know, they take one band, six triangles, and three tassels on top, and sometimes children will pick 10 different colors. So we'll get, <laughs> we'll get a little of everything. And you notice we do have some of them are pattern pieces and some are mm -hmm. solids. And sure. sometimes we will have... 10 different pattern pieces oh, in there too and, and it it's okay up, looks like a patchwork quilt and I say the point is to stay warm <laughs> and, and then you also sometimes make cute little ones to match yeah their, we have made dolls little, little ones for dolls and and we also are able to size these hats that's one of the beauties of the pattern so if we have a you know a larger child or adult or if we have a very small um, baby mm -hmm. or toddler, we can also size the pattern to match the, the recipient. And you say you just take it in, add more, it's, mm -hmm. not, it's, it's not an exact it's science. It's not complicated no. at all. Uh -huh. And fleece is a very forgiving fabric to work with, so you can really adjust it on the spot. And it, then we also have a mirror at every table when we're sewing with children, so that at the end of their hat, they, we hold, they can hold up the mirror and, and admire admire what they have. You've introduced them to sewing, the, you've given them something new, you've kept them warm. And if people would like, our viewers would like to know how to work with this, you can go to nancyzeman.com.
And at nancyzeman.com, you can click under the hat lady and we'll give instructions on how to make the hat and Wonderful. you can do that in your in their area as well. Nancy, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And thank you for being with us on Sewing with Nancy for this two-part series on Serger Boutique. We'd like to thank our guests during the sewing segments, Barbara Goldcorn, for sharing with us great ideas. Thank Nancy Daly for being with us for this great idea of hats for those in need and thank you for watching. Bye for now. Nancy and Barbara Goldcorn have written a fully illustrated book entitled Serger Boutique that includes all of the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2618. Order item number BK2618, Serger Boutique. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeven.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.